Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use arrays within jQuery. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Dreamweaver we have our files that we've been working on in the past few videos. Now if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend that you go and check those out because we have discussed quite a few concepts within jQuery that will help you in understanding what we're going to be talking about today. So what we're actually going to be doing today is discussing the arrays within jQuery. So I'm just going to go over to my script.js file and I have some code here from previous tutorials that we can just take out. So we want everything to still reside within this main document ready so don't actually delete that. We want everything to stay within there. So what we're creating is an array. An array is basically a container of a list of information. So if you remember in the last video we talked about variables and those basically store information. So if we're storing a list of information then it makes sense for our array to start in a variable. So we're just going to start by defining a variable, so var space, and then we need to create a name for that. So I'm just going to call it my array, and then space equals space, and then in order to actually create the array we need to have an open square bracket, close square bracket, and a semicolon. Okay, so since uh, we're going to be creating a list of information we need to actually put that information in here. And so the way we do that is to actually put two quotes in here and then put your information inside of the quote. So we're just going to do a list of names because that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to put Kevin and then we'll put comma, space, and then two quotes. So basically what we have here uh, is Kevin and that's the first element of our array and a first thing within our list. And then we can take and put a comma and then more quotes and then that's going to be our second element. So we'll say Bill, we can say maybe Tom, and Joe. Alright, so you get the idea. Basically, you can keep going on forever and ever creating a list of information. So, whereas a variable was holding one specific piece of information, an array basically holds this list. So, we can manipulate this to at any given time give us Kevin or Tom or Joe or the entire list of all of these things. So we can either look at it as a whole or we can look at it as each individual piece separated by these commas. Okay, so in order to kind of give you a better idea of what that looks like, we can actually alert this out. So I'm going to say alert, open close parentheses, semicolon. And then if you remember from the last video, the variables, whenever you alert those out, they don't need to be in quotes. So we'll just paste in my array into this alert, save it. We'll go over and test this in Chrome. And you can see that it alerts out Kevin, Bill, Tom, and Joe. So now that's basically our entire array, so let's um, see if we can specify that down a little bit to give us something specific. So I'm just going to take this out, and the way that this is going to look, we'll build it outside of our alert first, and then we'll take and copy and paste that into the alert so that it makes a little more sense. So the way that we do that is by first saying the name of our array. So we'll say my array, and then we need to specify which element of the array we want. And the way that we're going to do that is by putting that into square brackets. So we'll have our open and close square brackets. And now we need to basically pick the number of the order of the list that we want to select. So you would think that it would be Kevin is one, Bill is two, so one, two, three, four, but it's not. It actually starts with counting at zero. So Kevin is actually zero, Bill is one, Tom is two, and then Joe is three. So with that in mind, if we wanted to select Kevin, we would take and type a zero into my array. And so now this whole block of code right here is equal to Kevin. Now, if we were to change this to a one, it would be zero one, which would be Bill. And so now this whole thing is equal to Bill. So if we take that, and I'll just cut that, and then we'll take and put that into our alert. So alert again, and just paste that in there. So we have my array, and then one. And we take and go back over to Chrome and refresh that, you can see that now we just alert Bill. So instead of alerting the entire array, we can specify any specific piece. So if we wanted to say Tom, we'll just change this to a two, go back over to Chrome, and you can see that we get Tom now alerting out from jQuery. All right, so in order to make this a little bit more complicated and a little bit more versatile, what we're going to do is take a look at how to use arrays within arrays, which are also called nested arrays. So I'm just going to take and delete that out, and what we're going to do is simplify this down to, um, and then kind of build up with it. So I'm going to take and delete out everything except the name Kevin from our array, and we can even change our, na our name of our array to my nested array so that we know what we're working with. So. The way that nested arrays work are basically uh, the same syntax as regular arrays except that they're within each other. So in order to create an array within an array, we need to put more square brackets. So we need to put square brackets around this Kevin here. So before this quotation mark and after this quotation mark. So now what we can do is put another comma and we can put some more brackets, another comma, 
some more brackets. And so now you can see that we have an array here, we have an array here, we have an array here. And so now within each of those, then we have our other array. So let's say that we wanted to have um, some information about Kevin. So after the quotation marks, we can take and put some more quotes. So comma and some quotes. And then we'll just say maybe a descriptive word. So we'll say cool. And then we can take and come over here. And so within our second array, we're going to take and say Bill, comma, more quotes. Now, awesome. Now, I am going to go back and explain this a little bit. So if you're feeling a little lost right now, don't worry. We're going to take a look at this again. So we'll say Tom. We'll say Tom is fantastic. Okay. So what we have here are basically arrays within arrays. So we have one large array, which is denoted by this square bracket on the end. So that's hold, all held within my nested array. Now, within that, we have three smaller arrays. So we have an array that starts here. It's separated by this comma. Then we have another array, which is this Bill and Awesome. And then we have another array, which is Tom and Fantastic. So once you get the syntax down for that, it's pretty straightforward to keep adding arrays and information within the arrays. So now what we can actually do is take and look at a specific array within this and then a specific piece of information within that array. So say that out of all of this, we wanted this array right here that holds Bill and Awesome, and then we wanted just the word Awesome, we can select that out. So in order to show you guys how that works, we're just again going to build this and then we'll take and put that into an alert. So what we need to start with is my nested array, because we always start with the name of the array. Then we'll have our brackets, and then we need another set of brackets since we now have an array within an array, and then we'll hit a semicolon right there. So what we want to do is take and in the first set of brackets select which array we want. So we're basically selecting which of these. So this Kevin and Cool, Bill and Awesome, or Tom and Fantastic. So the first number is always going to be which of those things you're selecting. So in this case let's say that we want to mess with this Bill and Awesome. So this is going to again be the second one in the list which is going to be zero and then one. So because it's the second item, you always subtract one, so it's going to be one. So when we put a one here, we're selecting this entire piece of the array. So now say that we wanted to select the word awesome after that. So in order to select awesome, it would be zero, one. So bill is zero, and then awesome is one. So you start counting over from within side of this array. So zero, one, so awesome is going to be one. Okay, so we'll do that. And now I guess I can take and cut this we don't really need the semicolon at the end, so I'll just delete that off. And we'll say alert, open close parenthesis, semicolon. And then inside of the alert, we'll just paste in what we just had there. So my nested array, one, one. Okay, so then we can come back over to Chrome, refresh that, and now we get awesome right here. Okay, so you see how that works. If we were to change this to zero, this last number, then we're going to alert Bill. So now we get Bill. So now if we took and changed this to my nested array um, on the first number and then we wanted to alert uh, Kevin we would just change this to zero so then it would be zero which is Kevin cool and then zero which is Kevin so now we take and go back over to Chrome and we get Kevin alright so that works out pretty good now let's go back over here and I'm going to teach you a little bit about concatenation which is basically how to make um, added sentences and strings together using different variables pieces of arrays, text, all kinds of things like that. So what we're actually going to do is delete this alert out. And now we're going to take and make a sentence that says Bill is awesome. So I guess we can bring this back here so we can start with this. So we're basically just using what we already had, my nested array, then two sets of brackets with each one having a number. So if we want Bill, we're going to say one and then zero. So that's going to be Bill's name. So we're selecting the first array again zero one and then zero which is Bill's name so then we'll say plus okay and then we'll do a space and then two quotes and then inside of that we're going to do space is space and then so then outside of that after this quote a space plus space and then we want to say awesome so I'm just going to copy all of this stuff right here and we're going to paste that out and so now in order to get awesome we just change this zero to a one Okay, so now what we can do is take and let's just put all of this in a variable. So I'll say var space, we'll call it my sentence, 
and then equals all of this stuff that we've created here. Okay, so now we can basically just alert out my sentence and it will say all of this stuff. So let's take again a look at what we actually have here. We have my nested array of Bill. So we'll say Bill and then we're adding in this word is with the spaces on each side so that we have basically spaces in our sentence. And then we're adding in the word awesome. So now we take and alert this out. And now all we need to alert out is my sentence because we've taken and put all that information into a variable just to make it easy for ourselves. So we'll alert out my sentence, go over to Chrome, and now we have Bill is awesome. Okay, so just a little bit more about concatenation. Basically, whenever you add information within something, it's going to look like this. You'll have something, so you'll have some object, and then you'll have a space, a plus, a space, two quotes, a space, plus, a space, and then you'll have another thing. Okay, so getting this syntax correct uh, is sometimes tricky. Basically, it's the same thing on both sides, uh, but you need to make sure you have the syntax correct, otherwise it's not going to be adding these things correctly. So uh, it's always a space and then the quotes, which is going to hold whatever string of information, whatever words you want in there, and then you're going to have another thing. Now, if you wanted to add something at the end, you're only going to have half of that. So let's say that we wanted to say why Bill is awesome. So we'll say Bill is awesome because, so we'll put a space at the end of here, a plus, a space, and then we only need the two quotes because we're not adding anything after that, so we don't need the other plus. So inside of these quotes, we'll say why Bill is awesome. We'll say like, because he can fly. That would make him pretty awesome. Okay, so now if we take, and we're still alerting out my sentence, we can go over to Chrome, refresh this. Now, Bill is awesome because he can fly. Now, you'll see that awesome and because are spaced together. We don't have a space there because what we need to do is make sure that we put in a space right here at the beginning of because so that when this butts right up against this word awesome, then it'll have a space in there because it basically concatenation puts them all together unless you specify that space. So we'll just take and refresh this, and now we should see our sentence right there. Bill is awesome because he can fly. All right, so that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, we've covered basically arrays and nested arrays and concatenation and actually adding words and variables and things like that together so that we can make some kind of coherent sentence. So I hope you guys learned something in this video. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have new videos coming out every week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.